Hi everybody, this is my review of the Alcatel One Touch Fierce. I know what you're saying, why there have been so many different reviews on this on YouTube already, why would I bother doing another one? Really simple, I don't think this phone has gotten its fair shake, so to speak, on YouTube. For the most part, most of the reviews just parroted other reviews. Basically, they heard one thing and just added it to their review. I don't honestly think most of the folks who actually did a review on this phone owned it for more than, I don't know, a day. Truth of the matter is, for the money, this is easily the best smartphone you can get. And understand what I mean by buy the money. What you pay for this is $30 Metro PCS. 30 bucks. You own it for 30 bucks. Understand that. This isn't something that has to be paid off. It actually has a decent screen to it, very good specs, which I'll get to in a sec. Bottom line, any other phone in that price range, $30 to say 100 which is what you will pay for it if you're going for the T-Mobile version, but do understand this can be unlocked. What you get for your money is amazing. It really is. Anything in this price class pretty much sucks. There's really no other term for it. You get dinky little three-inch screens, still running gingerbread for crying out loud. I mean, these are phones you don't, you not only don't want to use, but in my opinion, they shouldn't even be out on the market anymore. Ice cream sandwich is pretty much the minimum you should be going for on any Android phone. And this one actually has Jelly Bean 4.2.2, which is really nice. Um, but what makes this phone really cool, as I stated earlier, it can actually be unlocked. So it can work across just about any GSM-based uh, carrier. It works uh, really, really well on T-Mobile. That's what I've been testing it on. It, the specs are simply amazing for a $30 phone. Uh, it has a 960 by 540 pixel, four, four and a half inch screen. It is a standard TFT screen, and uh, this is one of the things it seems to get beat up on for some reason. Uh, they, they claim the viewing angles are bad. I don't know. They don't look too bad to me. Bottom up, left, right, top down seems to be its worst. But uh, again, for a TFT, four and a half inch screen, I don't think it's not bad at all. I actually think the... Uh, the color saturation is also quite excellent on this phone. Uh, colors really pop on the screen. It looks really, really nice. Um, again, excellent screen as far as I'm concerned. And for 30 bucks, good luck beating it. It is running a quad core processor. Yep, quad core for 30 bucks. MediaTek MT6589M. It's running at 1.2 gigahertz. And it's also sporting a PowerVR SXG544 multi-core processor uh, multi-core GPU excuse me <clears throat> this is by the by the same exact no joke the same exact GPU only with one core less this one has a dual core according to MediaTek I contacted them and they were nice enough to get back to me uh, the S4 is sporting the exact same GPU with a triple core processor so honestly power wise this phone's got it in spades. It's got a lot of power, it really does. The Cortex A7 processor that MediaTek chose was chosen more for its low power profile than for its outright power. But to be honest, it, it has more than enough muscle power through anything you're likely to throw at it. It's got a lot of power to it. Uh, as you can see, it, I'm running right now <clears throat> Go Launcher Prime, which is a pretty power hungry launcher. I purposely chose this one for this review just to show folks that, you know, look, it works just fine. I find that uh, everything on it does what it's supposed to do. I'm not running in any, any real lags. Uh, anytime I need to go into an app or anything, it works just fine. Again, very, very nice performance for a $30 phone. <laughs> Uh, getting back to the specs, it also comes with a paltry 4 gigabytes of RAM built in, of which only 2.4 gigabytes are usable. So an SD card is an absolute necessity, and thankfully this one can take it up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, works very good. Plus, unlike phones in the $30 range, this thing actually has a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, most every one that you'll see uh, below this has about still has 512. 
Uh, so a gigabyte of RAM allow you to run just about anything you want to run into it. Um, the only real things I don't like about this particular thing spec-wise are the cameras. At the very least, it has a front-facing camera. I will give it that. Um, I'm not going to say it's a good one because it isn't. Actually, to be point blank honest, it kind of sucks. But at least it has one. <laughs> Any other phone on this price class, including, say, Nokia Lumina, uh, Lumia, excuse me, the 521, that doesn't even have a front-facing camera at all. So at the very least, they put one on here so you can Skype with it. So uh, it's the uh, simple saying, better to have even a lousy one than to not have one at all. So at least it has that. Um, the rear-facing camera, and eh, not so good. Uh, it is a 5-megapixel job, and it does have a flash. But uh, it is fixed focus. Uh, one of the, Everything that pretty much has been said about it is true. It's not that great. It really isn't. You can't use it for scanning. But uh, again, I've seen worse pictures. I really have on cameras that cost, on phones, excuse me, that cost considerably more. So I can't say it's unusable because that would be a lie. It is quite usable. And it does have some nice post-processing um, uh, software that's on the phone that actually allows you to fix up the photo as much as even sharpen it up because it does have a very soft focus to it. It allows you to sharpen it, fix the colors in a bit, all before you use them. Again, it's a usable camera. It's not a great camera, but for 30 bucks, again, I'm not complaining. The uh, last tech point I'm going to hit on is the battery. It is an 1800 mAh. Unfortunately, it's non removable, but again, this thing has great battery life. The only real reason I would ever want to remove a battery from a phone is to replace it with a higher MAH rating so that I get better life out of it. Thanks to the MediaTek, media, thanks to MediaTek using a, a very low power A7 processor, the battery life on this thing is excellent. Combine that with the standard resolution screen instead of a high def screen, which while they're beautiful, they do tend to suck down quite a bit of power. And uh, this one just works and it works beautifully. Um, battery life, I, I get all day and I play games on this thing constantly. I'm on YouTube on a regular basis. I am online like crazy. I mean, I'm doing everything possible to kill my battery uh, in an eight to 10 hour period every day. And this thing just cruises through it like it's nothing getting to what this phone can actually do well anything really you can go online very easily i never have a problem going to uh, any sites i'm just going to pop on this one just because it's here just pop onto a life hacker load it in three seconds flat 4g speeds on this phone are actually very very good uh i'm not noticing any slowdowns or lags as you can see it just goes right into it Scrolling is very, very easy. You can pinch, you can zoom in, zoom out pretty easily. Doesn't really stutter too much when you're doing that. I kind of like that. Again, very nice online experience. Very simple to get to use. Uh, wi Fi, by the way, the range on this is uh, some of the best I've seen on a phone. I go with my Wi Fi and I just use my router and I can go just about anywhere and it, it simply doesn't drop it, which is a really nice thing to, for those who don't want to kill their data plans by uh, keeping uh, staying on data all the time. Um, one other thing I can say about this thing, it's light. It doesn't really have uh, a lot of heft to it. So carrying it around all day is actually a pleasure. We can't say the same for a lot of larger phones out there with bigger screens. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, as for modding, another reason, it probably to me, it's one of the best reasons to get this phone. You can root this phone so easily, it's not even funny. It's 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 a joke. I like to use Framaroot. Uh, it's literally a one-touch job. You download it on the phone, put it into the phone, and literally with one touch, boom, you've rooted this phone. Uh, the exploit I use on Framaroot is the Faramir, F-A-R-A-M-I-R exploit, and boom, one, two, three. Everything works. Everything uh, works well rooted. Uh, don't have problems with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or anything. Literally, it, it, it's exactly as it was before you rooted it. Only you can use lots of good rooting apps. My favorite rooted rooted app is Greenfi. Greenify. What this does very simply is it hibernates 
all of the apps that you have on your phone, literally all of them can be hibernated. Um, instead of freezing and unfreezing, which forces you to go into this program to do so, to go into a program like Titanium Pro, uh, they offer a feature that allows you to freeze a program, but you have to literally go into Titanium Pro again to freeze it and unfreeze it, and that can be a bit of a hassle. Greenify eliminates that little problem by putting this little, giving you a little app you can put up here called Hibernate. You click on it, goes in, and whatever ones you happen to have open, it will automatically hibernate them again right after you use them. This is amazing for battery life. Uh, I, it, it can add an easy 20% to your battery life all day simply because it stops all of these programs that, all of these apps that run in the background from running in the background. It stops them dead. Uh, frees up a lot of uh, processor power as well. So the phone remains very, very smooth even if you have hundreds of apps on it. Really, really, really good one, and uh, I, I could not more highly recommend that be the very first thing after you root this to uh, add to uh, the phone. Greenify is an excellent, excellent app. Kudos to the folks who made it. Um, again, really, there is nothing on this phone. You won't feel like you're wanting for anything while using this phone. Uh, gaming, again, really good GPUs mean very good gaming. Uh, not having a problem with gaming on here at all. Let me see, which one am I gonna pick? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go with Angry Birds Go, because I've been playing that quite a bit. Here we go. Um, I've had all the Asphalt series running on here, no problems. I've had, uh, well basically, you pretty much name it, I've pretty much been running it. Right, let's get rid of this. Let's get back on the plane. Very quickly loads into any game. This is not the easiest thing to do while you're playing. I'm going to do my best here. Really hard to do while you are. Oh, yeah. I am messing this up, but again. Just wanted to show you that it can play it. No drop frames, no nothing. Just plays smoothly, plays very easily. Again, I'm running off the road here trying to keep this on the screen. <laughs> at least get through one lap here. Again, gaming on this is a lot of fun. And there you go. Gaming on this works very easily. I don't have a problem with literally anything that I've pretty much played. Uh, this version of Jelly Bean is excellent. Works very nicely. Very smooth, uh, I would say an almost Nexus-like experience for the simple reason of there's really nothing on here. There's, the bloat is like zero. There are a few apps on here from T-Mobile, but they're actually pretty good apps. One that actually allows you to check your account, and another one that actually allows you to use uh, Wi-Fi for calling. So I wouldn't call that bloat, I call that something that's actually useful. So again, a very simple experience. You can set it up any which way you want. You can get it doing pretty much whatever you want it to do. Um, again, just going to give you an idea how decently this uh, screen looks. I think this is a really very, very, very nice screen, especially for a thirty-dollar phone. Look at these. Look at the colors. They pop beautifully. Notice how everything is just working very, very, very smoothly. Again, no slowdowns. What more could you possibly want in a smartphone? Seriously. It is an excellent, excellent phone, and for 30 bucks, cannot be touched, even for $100, cannot be touched. I want to see anybody try to beat this one, I really do. This, it is amazing for the money, it really is. And even, this is perfect for folks who, have, who require a family plan, and who are on a family plan, and you want to get new phones with that family plan that you're, that you're not going to be paying through the nose for forever. For the price of, say, one Nexus 5, you can get four, maybe even five of these. And to be honest, while the Nexus 5 is actually an excellent phone, no questions asked, 
it's not so much better than this one where well, you're gonna miss really miss out on uh, using a smartphone for the way it's supposed to be used this is an excellent phone at an excellent price again I couldn't more highly recommend it to anybody who is looking for something who is looking either for their first smartphone or folks who have had a good smartphone experience who want to get into rooting who want to actually start playing around with their phones this is an excellent phone for that I should also mention that accessories are a plenty for this they are all over the place Amazon eBay anywhere basically you look for it uh, you can get cases for like four bucks or less there are batteries go off for this thing so yeah accessories are there for it not not a usual thing when you're getting a lower end phone by the by so uh, that did bear mentioning on here so summing up this is an excellent phone at an amazing price I know I keep saying it it has to be said quad core processor a big four and a half inch screen that works very well has better than what other folks were stating uh, viewing angles really good colors really easy to see really easy to work with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis it can be rooted effortlessly there is just so much you can do with this phone and you're not paying a lot to do it you can unlock it to use it on any GSM carrier you want to use it with it's again across the board it checks all the boxes on anything you would really want to use an Android smartphone for and anything you'd want to do with an Android smartphone don't pass this one up folks just don't it is an amazing phone uh, and the deal just doesn't get better than that if you have any questions at all ask below I'll ask to the, I will answer to the best of my ability thanks for watching bye hoy conoceremos al smartphone con la mejor cámara con ustedes el Nokia Lumia 1020Fabricado bajo la misma línea de diseño de sus antepasados Lumia como el 920 o el 720, el nuevo Nokia 1020 tiene un tamaño compacto que resulta ideal para sostenerlo por largos periodos de tiempo y poder capturar múltiples fotografías y videos. Su cuerpo está fabricado en policarbonato de alta calidad, que a diferencia de equipos Nokia anteriores, viene en una tonalidad mate en vez del acabado brilloso que hemos visto en el 920, lo cual resulta en un aspecto de mejor calidad a la vista y al tacto, al menos para mi gusto. Este nuevo smartphone con Windows Phone es el equipo de Nokia más importante del 2013 y su enfoque primordial es el de la fotografía, algo que es más que evidente al ver el tamaño de la pequeña joroba que alberga el sensor y el lente en la parte posterior. En cuanto a sus especificaciones, el Lumia 1020 es un equipo con un procesador Qualcomm Snapdragon de doble núcleo a 1.5 GHz Great. Su pantalla es AMOLED con resolución de 720 x 1280 píxeles y está protegida con Gorilla Glass 3. Además, Cuenta con 2 GB en RAM y 32 o 64 GB en memoria interna. Su GPU es un Adreno 225, tiene LTE, Wi-Fi Dual Band y Bluetooth 3.0 con A2DP. La pantalla cuenta con tecnología Clear Black de Nokia, que realza los colores y permite una tremenda visibilidad en exteriores, ideal para capturar mejores fotografías al momento de encuadrar y enfocar, además de las ventajas obvias de visualizar mejor el contenido y las propias aplicaciones. Algo molesto es que debido al sensor de imagen que sobresale casi medio centímetro, resulta algo engorroso al colocar el Lumia 1020 sobre superficies planas, ya que como se aprecia queda un poco como bailando, y no es muy práctico ni otorga gran seguridad, aunque se soluciona colocando el equipo al revés. Su diseño unibody es muy similar al Lumia 920, aunque con mejoras notables, como la protección de Gorilla Glass 3 en la pantalla, que lo hace extremadamente resistente, algo que comprobé sin querer, porque al estar grabando el video se cayó de más de metro y medio de altura sobre piedras, mientras que su carcasa trasera apenas sufrió algunas raspaduras superficiales, como podrán percibir en algunas tomas de este análisis, la pantalla se mantuvo 100% intacta, mientras que mi iPhone 5, que cayó de 20 centímetros hace unas semanas mientras grababa otro video, pues la pantalla quedó totalmente hecha añicos. El Lumia 1020 también adelgazó un poco en su grosor, 
y el diseño exterior también es un poco más ergonómico que su antecesor, y aunque el sensor de imagen parezca demasiado estorboso, en realidad apenas se percibe al sostener el equipo en las manos. Por cierto, hablando de la cámara, sin duda es el rasgo que define en sí mismo a Lumia 1020, con un impresionante sensor de 41 megapíxeles que sencillamente es el mejor de su clase, algo de lo que ahora hablaremos extensivamente en este análisis. Para empezar, su óptica es un lente Carl Zeiss de longitud focal de 26 mm en equivalencia de formato full frame, con una apertura f2.2 que permite captar más luz, algo que trabaja en conjunto con un sensor de imagen de un quinto del tamaño de una reflex profesional, además de tener un flash de xenón único en su tipo en todos los equipos disponibles en 2013. El Lumia 1020 viene de fábrica con tres aplicaciones de cámara, siendo la que están viendo ahora mismo la más sencilla, apenas con las funciones básicas presentes en otros equipos Lumia, las cuales permiten variar el tipo de escena, el ISO, la relación de aspecto y poco más. Aplicación ideal para quienes no quieran complicarse la existencia, pero que es igual a manejar un Ferrari siempre en segunda velocidad. La segunda de las apps de cámara presentes es Nokia Smart Cam, que como su nombre lo sugiere, permite hacer uso de las tremendas capacidades de la cámara de Lumia 1020 y generar efectos instantáneos y semiautomáticos con nuestro equipo. Uno de esos efectos es el de captura rápida de fotografías, función que aquí les muestro al arrojar mi encendedor hacia un mini cojín de poder PDA mientras el Lumia 1020 captura toda la escena mientras el cojín es golpeado por el encendedor, para después poder aplicar varios efectos que dependen dependiendo del tipo de escena que hayamos fotografiado. Finalmente, la aplicación de cámara más importante en el Lumia 1020 es Nokia ProCam, que otorga un control total sobre las variables de la cámara y al igual que en una cámara profesional, podremos variar el tiempo de obturación, el balance de blancos, la exposición, el ISO y por supuesto el enfoque, lo que nos da un amplísimo espectro de posibilidades para personalizar nuestras fotografías y si sabes algo del tema, el Lumia 1020 te será francamente irresistible. Cuando en fotografía obtenemos un objeto o persona en primer plano perfectamente definido y con toda claridad y el fondo desenfocado y borroso, a este efecto se le llama bouquet y es una cuestión que los fotógrafos profesionales siempre están buscando mejorar y que a final de cuentas es algo que hasta hace muy poco era imposible obtener con calidad decente en un smartphone o dispositivo móvil, algo que ahora les mostraré de manera gráfica en este segmento del análisis de Lumia 1020. Para mostrarles esta capacidad única, he colocado tres objetos a diferentes distancias, de manera que podamos enfocar el objeto más cercano y que puedan observar con claridad de lo que les hablo. Como pueden ver, al variar el enfoque manual de Nokia Pro Cam, el encendedor que está ubicado más al frente pasa de verse muy nítido a verse borroso y al tomar la fotografía, a pesar de encontrarnos en condiciones de poca luz, la definición con la que podemos apreciar el encendedor es fractamente espectacular. Y puedo decirles que ni el Nokia 808, también con tecnología PureView, era capaz de replicar lo que ahora su hermano, el Lumia 1020, puede en realidad lograr. Los resultados hablan por sí solos. Las fotografías que genera el Lumia 1020 lucen llenas de colores amigables y sobre todo, gracias a la enorme cantidad de megapíxeles, la definición de las fotografías tanto en el centro como en los extremos es simplemente espectacular, además de otorgarnos la posibilidad de hacer zoom en las fotografías una vez que ya fueron tomadas, sin perder nada de calidad, como lo muestro aquí con la foto de la pequeña oruga. Y bueno, en las noches no hay simplemente otro equipo mejor para fotografía nocturna. Por otro lado, el lente Carl Zeiss de Lumia 1020 cuenta con una tecnología de estabilización óptica, única también en su tipo, que nos permite generar videos con una calidad igual y sorprendente que la de las fotografías, tal y como les muestro con este segmento de grabación obtenido en la presentación de Lumia 1020 que organizó Nokia México en Valle de Bravo, que como podrán darse cuenta, fui grabado por mi compañero Ángel mientras me alejaba y acercaba montado en Cassandra, la yegua cafre que me tocó cabalgar aquel día y que no paraba de alebrestar al resto de caballos pero que disfruté como nunca antes. En cuanto a Windows Phone como sistema operativo presente en el Lumia 1020, pues no será ninguna novedad si les digo que sigue sin gustarme demasiado. Su interfaz extremadamente minimalista y cerrada llega a frustrarme por momentos y desear que Symbian existiera todavía. Si bien este smartphone incorpora algunas mejoras que Nokia ha incluido de manera adicional a lo ya conocido en Windows Phone de Microsoft, la realidad es que ahora que la empresa finlandesa ha sido comprada, mis esperanzas de ver una mayor integración y mejoras consistentes entre la interfaz nativa y las aplicaciones de valor agregado 
que ha ido añadiendo Nokia siguen aumentando a mayor velocidad. Todo con el fin de convertir a Windows Phone en un sistema operativo más completo y a la altura de competir en todos los aspectos contra Android y iOS, que por ahora generan una hegemonía total en el mercado, lo que ha ocasionado un freno considerable en el desarrollo e implementación de nuevas tecnologías y posibilidades al carecer de suficiente competencia por parte de otras empresas como BlackBerry o el mismo Microsoft con Windows Phone. He de confesar que Lumia 1020 me ha encantado y desde que comencé a aprender sobre fotografía y video, el aspecto de captura de imagen en los smartphones ha subido considerablemente mis prioridades, al considerar lo que un smartphone me ofrece. Sé que no estoy solo y que hay millones de usuarios en el mundo cuya consideración sobre este mismo aspecto también resulta muy importante. No me queda más que felicitar a Nokia y desearle a Microsoft toda la suerte al manejar el destino de una de las empresas más pioneras en el mercado de los smartphones. El Lumia 1020 estará disponible en México con Telcel a un precio aún desconocido hacia finales de octubre o principios de noviembre, como los directivos de Nokia México nos lo hicieron saber. Si te ha gustado este análisis, te invito a apoyarnos otorgándonos tu like y suscríbete a nuestro canal. Además, recuerda, esto es Pasión Móvil. What's up? This is Multi Death Bulls here, and I'm going to show you a little unboxing video of the new Beat Studio White Edition. As you can see, I already unboxed them, and because my phone had too much stuff in it, so I had to delete it. Well, whatever, but let's show you the box. Alright, so this is what, when you get the box, the new Beat Studio, you're going to get this white. It shows you the white headphones that are in a picture of them on the side. The Beat Studio, and a sticker. <clears throat> now, on the side, it says the original Beats that took the world by storm. I, it's compatible with iPhone, uh, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. And that's a picture of the Beats. There's the studio picture right there. Uh, the studio word. And this is the headphones. Oops, sorry. And this is the mic that comes with it. The charging port. It's the USB. And the, the cord that does not come with it. Now these can last for 20 hours of, ba of battery. And here's the other side, and here's the front. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go open them. As you can see, they changed this from the circle or the oval now to a square. And give me a second. I'm trying to do this one hand. And, uh, this video but um yeah my phone ran out of space again but let's quickly do that you already seen the box so let's take off the sleeve as you can tell I already got I just got out of school and here's the front of the box the side back of course the other side and just my the serial number <clears throat> there's a beats logo right here and let's pop this right off second the original remastered says right here. Ready? One, two, three. Oh man, so sick. All right, so you got your headphone case right here, which, which is really an eggshell. But we'll take that aside. Um, seems like there's something behind here, so let's pop this right off. Oops, there we go. And as you can see, you got your manual. Uh, let's open this up. <clears throat> right there. Wait one second. These are three hundred dollars. What's up, guys? I'm going to do this one more time. My phone ran out of battery. One, not battery, but storage once again. But let's open up this manual. And you see, there is your quick start guide with if you don't know how to start these up you get a sticker your warranties English and English and you get your uh, yeah one second let me think of it yeah uh, catalog there we go and there's your the white studios and the red ones 
and some solos, tours, and all that other stuff. So let's just put this to the side. And you get this Beats Cleaning Cloth. Cloth. I can't. Cloth. And this is because it's a glossy finish on the, these headphones. And let's put these aside. And it's over here. So little other prizes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Alright. So, as you can see, the here's another package. And I think this is your charger. USB charger for your headphones. Put that right there. And over here, your... Here is your USB charger for your headphones. Here is the <clears throat> just the regular cord without a mic. And here is the uh yeah, the mic with the volume up and volume down so you can make calls with these. And it comes with one more thing, this keychain, the this little hook. And yeah, you you can hook it to your case, walk around, but I wouldn't recommend putting it on your bag cuz someone could grab it. Alright, so let's put these to the side, and let's get to the headphones. Alright, so, the headphones themselves are pretty cool. Now, I need to vacuum this, so, the floor, so whatever. Oh, wow, can't even open it. Alright, so, eggshell, you can see. Oh, wait, oh, there we go. Sorry if you saw, this is my office, slash my dad's, but here, ready, one, two, three, oh, ho, 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 man, these are sick, now, as you can see, these, they're nice, they click together, they got your head adjuster, you got some nice le leather right here, which, or I think these are like the pros, and nice cushioning you can see here click and there is your port for the USB and if you click this I think it's charge it I'm gonna charge it but here's your headphone jack last time make it sure because I do we a lot of videos uh, here is the beat that I think I told you this, and this is the play and pause button. Let me adjust that for you. There you go. And, as you can see, it's a nice chrome finish right there, with the nice red around it. It says studio. Left. Right. Okay, I didn't know what that was. As you can see, it's gray on the inside. And it says beats. As you can see, these are not fingerprint magnets, but they do, they will get dirty. My next headphones I'm probably going to get will be the Beats mixers. I'll be around April, probably be put on in May. But I'm going to show you the case. And these ca this case, as you can see, you put your headphones there. There's no place to put your, you know your cords, so you're going to have to put that in another case, or put them in here and they'll jumble around everywhere. But, these can fold up, like that, and you can plop them right in the case. Now, when I was in Florida for my va this vacation, I bought a fake pair of these, but they're gray. And so, I spent three hundred dollars for nothing but you know I got these so I'm happy uh, so yeah do you want to see anything else for these I'll show you one more time of the cords as you can see if I just zip this up one second guys sorry about this There we go. I had to break through the little thing. And so you can use your cord, this little clip, and this is it. Yeah, it's just very hard to put on. You shoot a little clip and just. Nope. 
close. Ah, dang it. So glad. Oh, whoops, my battery. And there we go. Nope, wait. There we go. Alright, so as you can see, it does say beats on this. And you can just put these anywhere. Uh, but yeah, put those over there. Here are your cords. Uh, yep, that's just, as you can see, one cord. These do come, I'll open this one up. As you can see, they're different cords. So this one <coughs> does have that nice reflection on it. And it does come with a beat. It's an L jack for your phone. <coughs> I think they're supposed to be better. That's the microphone one comes with it too. This does not say beats anymore. This goes into the headphones. And here is your charger, as you can see. One second. Yep, right, I can do it here. He flips open, plug it in the wall. You can charge your phone with it, put your charger in it, not the beads. But the this the beads, I think they're more compatible with other stuff too. I'm not so sure. But I'll I'll look that up later. Your charger, as you can see, you put that into the headphones and that into here. And your and uh, yep, this is your mic. As you can see you can call it on it. But yeah. That's it. And here I'll show you the cloth. As you can see the beat logos right there. And it's a nice cloth. But yeah. Beat Studios. Nice pair of headsets. Recommend this. That's what I saved my money up for. But thanks for watching guys. I'll next video will be about my beats mixers or something else. See ya. Hi, this is Warner Crocker, GottaBeMobile.com, coming to you with another GottaBeMobile.com ink show. And before we get started on this ink show and talking about what I've got right here, I want to take just a minute, as we always do, to give a big shout out and thank you to our ink show and podcast sponsor, TechSmith Corporation. They're the makers of Snagit and Camtasia Studio and other fine products. Please head on over to www.techsmith.com, check out their products, tell them the gang from GottaBeMobile.com sent you. We'll be happy, they'll be happy, and we'll be able to keep doing all these great ink shows. Well, what's this ink show about? Well, this has been a very eagerly awaited, much anticipated new tablet PC from Lenovo. Yes, it's the X200T tablet PC. Just got my hands on this. This is an early evaluation model, um, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, a couple of caveats here. One, this is a very early evaluation model. Uh, I've been told to make sure I let you know that the software load as well as what's on the BIOS here may be different on this than what is actually going to be shipping. Um, second, we don't really know what the release date of this is going to be. As I sit here recording this particular ink show, still don't know. Um, we'll be releasing this ink show as soon as we know that it is okay to do so, but it could come any day now. Um, it could come later than that. So we'll, uh, when you see this, who knows where the news will have moved to by that particular point. So that's kind of both exciting and interesting. Lenovo sent this along as an evaluation unit. I'm very glad they did. I think they've got another winner here with the X200T uh, tablet PC. Um, in early testing, I like it a lot. I like what I see. Um, so let's do some comparisons. I've been using the Lenovo ThinkPad X61 for quite some time now. That's right here. And, you know, this has served me very well. I don't think of this as a very heavy tablet PC. Um, this, even though it's widescreen with a WXGA resolution, meaning the body's a little wider, feels a little lighter than the X61 here. Um, and that's, of course, as you can see, both of them have the extended battery on them here. So there's a little, things are a little lighter here, which is really nice. Now I'm going to stack this up, one on top of the other here, and get close to the camera. And also reach behind the camera and pop on a light here so hopefully you can see things just a little clearer there. 
there we go as we go around here now um, you can see the size difference side to side there it does not look that much difference although with the X200T on the bottom it's just slightly thinner there um, but if I flip this up this away okay again the X200 is in the back sorry for the flare there it's just reflection off the light um, you can see the size difference that that widescreen body makes in terms of this but you'll also notice back here okay just that, that it's a little bit thinner this way okay again front to back see there it's a little bit thinner that way with the battery attached as well okay and we'll set the X61 down here and we'll go ahead and do a tour it feels very nice and solid just like you would expect from uh, Lenovo Think Bad products okay right here we've got a USB port here we've got the pen in its garage there um, pops right out and this is a difference in terms of where the pen or the stylus is stored from the X61 on um, the X61 right down here in this corner uh, right on the lower left corner if you were using this with the screen popped up and the keyboard so that's something different um, you'll also notice right here we've got a wireless WAN antenna which was an option that you could get on the X61 as well here's our key here's our latch for raising the lid um, and as we come across we see we don't really have anything else here but a couple of notches here where the dock would fit in okay on this side here you'll see we've got uh, wait a minute Did I, I lie we do have something else here in the front got an SD card slot right there forgot all about that anyway back over here we got a PC card slot and then we've got our wireless antenna on off switch right there okay and that's also something different from the X61 the X61 that was right here on the front okay so that's something different as well in the form factor and as we come around you can see we've got another USB slot um, here we've got a LAN port VGA um, we've also got venting here AC power Kensington lock here come across the back we've just got our battery um, on this side you'll see we've got another USB port again here's where the pin is and this port right here we've got one screw pop this out this is where you can replace the hard drive uh, we've got a modem jack right here our audio ports right here and here we've got another USB port down here so we've got one two um, three USB ports on this that works out pretty well let's take a look at the bottom side here again here's that one screw so that you can pop out the hard drive and change that very easy to get to to configure the RAM this has got two gigabytes of RAM in it at the moment okay there you have that now here's the one switch as opposed to two uh, the X61 had two one on either side this has got one in the middle to pop out the battery uh, let's go ahead and pop that battery out here so you can take a look at it and there you go and again it's a little wider than the one on the X61 simply because the body is wider here um, I do believe this is a six cell battery that this is running um, and we'll just put that we'll pop that back in there if we can there we go and go ahead and lock that down okay let's go ahead and open her up take a look at what's on the inside there are some things that are different now this is going to get some reflection on the screen here I apologize for that now, this is not a view anywhere screen like I had on the X61 um, so interestingly enough you know, I kind of like that fact um, simply because it doesn't smudge as much <laughs> you'll notice up here we have a webcam right here at the top okay uh, that seems to work pretty well as far as these uh, embedded webcams do on these particular devices uh, we've got our power switch here our array of indicator lights right across there okay um, here we've got a button I'm not quite sure what this button does here it's got a circle on it there um, but this one here is our rotate button um, here we've got our toolbox button and here we've got a button to lock the screen right here I'll have to check on that and get back to you on that We've got our volume buttons right here, the ThinkVantage blue button, which brings up the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad ThinkVantage menu of options, power button here. So, again, whether you're in 
laptop mode or tablet mode, you've got power buttons, um, you can control things pretty well here as far as that's concerned, um, and of course you've got that great ThinkPad keyboard, and I'm a very big fan of that. We've got the thumbstick here, and of course our mouse button's right here with the middle button there that allows us to uh, you know, scroll and do things like that, just like on the X61. So, like that quite a bit uh, as far as that's concerned. Now, notice something here when we go ahead and rotate the screen around that's missing. Here we have our fingerprint reader. Not sure I showed you that. We used to have right here a nav dial, like on the X61, is what, where that was. I'll go ahead and show you that. Right here. We have no nav dial here on the X200T. Uh, I'm sure some folks are going to miss that. Um, me, not necessarily. I very seldom use that when I had this in tablet mode using it like this. Again, this feels very good in my hands, whether I'm holding it this way or this way. I don't know about you, but I always prefer to hold it this way with the battery here holding that. That's secondary portrait mode, I believe, in terms of what's going on there, but it feels very balanced, very, very nice in my hand. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera around here um, so that you can look at the screen while I work with it a little bit. So I'm going to stop this, turn the camera around, let you take a look at it here, try to get the lighting so we don't get any glare when any of this happens. The reason I'm going to do that, this is running um, the new Centrino Core 2 Duo platform. Um, it's an L9600 uh, chip rated at 1.86 gigahertz. Um, same thing I'm seeing on the HP 2730P tablet PC that I'm testing out. And let me tell you something folks, I am very impressed with this platform. Um, things fly on this. Now watch what's going to happen here. I'm running Vista Business. Uh, it's probably going to prove a liar out of me. Hi, this is Warner Crocker, GottaBeMobile.com, coming to you with another GottaBeMobile.com ink show. And before we get started on this ink show and talking about what I've got right here, I want to take just a minute, as we always do, to give a big shout out and thank you to our ink show and podcast sponsor, TechSmith Corporation. They're the makers of Snagit and Camtasia Studio and other fine products. Please head on over to www.techsmith.com, check out their products, tell them the gang from GottaBeMobile.com sent you. We'll be happy, they'll be happy, and we'll be able to keep doing all these great ink shows. Well, what's this ink show about? Well, this has been a very eagerly awaited, much anticipated new tablet PC from Lenovo. Yes, it's the X200T tablet PC. Just got my hands on this. This is an early evaluation model, um, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, a couple of caveats here. One, this is a very early evaluation model. Uh, I've been told to make sure I let you know that the software load as well as what's on the BIOS here may be different on this than what is actually going to be shipping. Um, second, we don't really know what the release date of this is going to be. As I sit here recording this particular ink show, still don't know. Um, we'll be releasing this ink show as soon as we know that it is okay to do so, but it could come any day now. Um, it could come later than that. So we'll, uh, when you see this, who knows where the news will have moved to by that particular point. So that's kind of both exciting and interesting. Lenovo sent this along as an evaluation unit. I'm very glad they did. I think they've got another winner here with the X200T uh, tablet PC. Um, in early testing, I like it a lot. I like what I see. Um, so let's do some comparisons. I've been using the Lenovo ThinkPad X61 for quite some time now. That's right here. And, you know, this has served me very well. I don't think of this as a very heavy tablet PC. Um, this, even though it's widescreen with a WXDA resolution, meaning the body's a little wider, feels a little lighter than the X61 here. Um, and that's, of course, as you can see, both of them have the extended battery on them here. So there's a little, things are a little lighter here, which is really nice. Now I'm going to stack this up, one on top of the other here, and get close to the camera. And also reach behind the camera and pop on a light here, so hopefully you can see things just a little clearer there. 
there we go as we go around here now um, you can see the size difference side to side there it does not look that much difference although with the X200T on the bottom it's just slightly thinner there um, but if I flip this up this away okay again the X200's in the back sorry for the flare there it's just reflection off the light um, you can see the size difference that that widescreen body makes in terms of this but you'll also notice back here okay just that, that it's a little bit thinner this way okay again front to back see there it's a little bit thinner that way with the battery attached as well okay and we'll set the X61 down here and we'll go ahead and do a tour it feels very nice and solid just like you would expect from uh, Lenovo think bad products okay right here we've got a USB port here we've got the pen in its garage there um, pops right out and this is a difference in terms of where the pen or the stylus is stored from the X61 on um, the X61 right down here in this corner uh, right on the lower left corner if you were using this with the screen popped up and the keyboard so that's something different um, you'll also notice right here We've got a wireless WAN antenna, which was an option that you could get on the X61 as well. Here's our key, here's our latch for raising the lid. Um, and as we come across, we see we don't really have anything else here but a couple of notches here where the dock would fit in. Okay, on this side here, you'll see we've got, uh, wait a minute, Did I, I lied, we do have something else here in the front. Got an SD card slot right there. Forgot all about that. Anyway, back over here, we've got a PC card slot. And then we've got our wireless antenna on off switch right there. Okay, and that's also something different from the X61. The X61, that was right here on the front. Okay, so that's something different as well in the form factor. And as we come around, you can see we've got another USB slot. Um, here we've got a LAN port, VGA. Um, we've also got venting here, AC power. Kensington lock here. Come across the back, we've just got our battery. Um, on this side, you'll see we've got another USB port. Again, here's where the pin is. And this port right here, we've got one screw. Pop this out. This is where you can replace the hard drive. Uh, we've got our modem jack right here, our audio ports right here. And here we've got another USB port down here. So we've got one, two, um, three USB ports on this that works out pretty well let's take a look at the bottom side here again here's that one screw so that you can pop out the hard drive and change that very easy to get to to configure the RAM this has got two gigabytes of RAM in it at the moment okay there you have that now here's the one switch as opposed to two uh, the X61 had two one on either side this has got one in the middle to pop out the battery uh, let's go ahead and pop that battery out here so you take a look at it there you go and again it's a little wider than the one on the X61 simply because the body is wider here um, I do believe this is a six cell battery that this is running um, and we'll just put that we'll pop that back in there if we can there we go and go ahead and lock that down Okay, let's go ahead and open her up, take a look at what's on the inside. There are some things that are different. Now, this is going to get some reflection on the screen here. I apologize for that. Now, this is not a View Anywhere screen like I had on the X61. Um, so, interestingly enough, you know, I kind of like that fact, um, simply because it doesn't smudge as much. <laughs> You'll notice up here we have a webcam right here at the top. Okay, uh, that seems to work pretty well as far as these uh, embedded webcams do on these particular devices. Uh, we've got our power switch here, our array of indicator lights right across there. Okay, um, here we've got a button. I'm not quite sure what this button does here. It's got a circle on it there. Um, but this one here is our rotate button. Um, here we've got our toolbox button and here we've got a button to lock the screen right here. I'll have to check on that and get back to you on that. We've got our volume buttons right here. The ThinkVantage blue button which brings up the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad ThinkVantage menu of options power button here. So again whether you're in 
laptop mode or tablet mode, you've got power buttons. Um, you can control things pretty well here as far as that's concerned. Um, and of course you've got that great ThinkPad keyboard and I'm a very big fan of that. We've got the thumbstick here and of course our mouse buttons right here with the middle button there that allows us to uh, you know, scroll and do things like that just like on the X61. So like that quite a bit uh, as far as that's concerned. Now notice something here when we go ahead and rotate the screen around that's missing. Here we have our fingerprint reader. Not sure I showed you that. We used to have right here a nav dial like on the X61 is what, where that was. I'll go ahead and show you that. Right here. We have no nav dial here on the X200T. Uh, I'm sure some folks are going to miss that. Um, me, not necessarily. I very seldom use that when I had this in tablet mode using it like this. Again, this feels very good in my hands, whether I'm holding it this way or this way. I don't know about you, but I always prefer to hold it this way with the battery here holding that. That's secondary portrait mode, I believe, in terms of what's going on there. But it feels very balanced, very, very nice in my hand. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera around here um, so that you can look at the screen while I work with it a little bit. So I'm going to stop this, turn the camera around, let you take a look at it here, try to get the lighting so we don't get any glare when any of this happens. The reason I'm going to do that, this is running um, the new Centrino Core 2 Duo platform. Um, it's an L9600 uh, chip rated at 1. Uh, 1.86 gigahertz. Um, same thing I'm seeing on the HP 2730P tablet PC that I'm testing out. And let me tell you something folks, I am very impressed with this platform. Um, things fly on this. Now watch what's going to happen here. I'm running Vista Business. Uh, it's probably going to prove a liar out of me. Hi, this is Warner Crocker, GottaBeMobile.com, coming to you with another GottaBeMobile.com ink show. And before we get started on this ink show and talking about what I've got right here, I want to take just a minute, as we always do, to give a big shout out and thank you to our ink show and podcast sponsor, TechSmith Corporation. They're the makers of Snagit and Camtasia Studio and other fine products. Please head on over to www.techsmith.com, check out their products, tell them the gang from GottaBeMobile.com sent you. We'll be happy, they'll be happy, and we'll be able to keep doing all these great ink shows. Well, what's this ink show about? Well, this has been a very eagerly awaited, much anticipated new tablet PC from Lenovo. Yes, it's the X200T tablet PC. Just got my hands on this. This is an early evaluation model, um, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, a couple of caveats here. One, this is a very early evaluation model. Uh, I've been told to make sure I let you know that the software load as well as what's on the BIOS here may be different on this than what is actually going to be shipping. Um, second, we don't really know what the release date of this is going to be. As I sit here recording this particular ink show, still don't know. Um, we'll be releasing this ink show as soon as we know that it is okay to do so, but it could come any day now. Um, it could come later than that. So we'll, uh, when you see this, who knows where the news will have moved to by that particular point. So that's kind of both exciting and interesting. Lenovo sent this along as an evaluation unit. I'm very glad they did. I think they've got another winner here with the X200T uh, tablet PC. Um, in early testing, I like it a lot. I like what I see. Um, so let's do some comparisons. I've been using the Lenovo ThinkPad X61 for quite some time now. That's right here. And, you know, this has served me very well. I don't think of this as a very heavy tablet PC. Um, this, even though it's widescreen with a WXDA resolution, meaning the body's a little wider, feels a little lighter than the X61 here. Um, and that's, of course, as you can see, both of them have the extended battery on them here. So there's a little, things are a little lighter here, which is really nice. Now I'm going to stack this up, one on top of the other here, and get close to the camera. And also reach behind the camera and pop on a light here so hopefully you can see things just a little clearer there. 
there we go as we go around here now um, you can see the size difference side to side there it does not look that much difference although with the X200T on the bottom it's just slightly thinner there um, but if I flip this up this away okay again the X200's in the back sorry for the flare there it's just reflection off the light um, you can see the size difference that that widescreen body makes in terms of this but you'll also notice back here okay just that, that it's a little bit thinner this way okay again front to back see there it's a little bit thinner that way with the battery attached as well okay and we'll set the X61 down here and we'll go ahead and do a tour it feels very nice and solid just like you would expect from uh, Lenovo Think Bad products okay right here we've got a USB port here we've got the pen in its garage there um, pops right out and this is a difference in terms of where the pen or the stylus is stored from the X61 on um, the X61 right down here in this corner uh, right on the lower left corner if you were using this with the screen popped up and the keyboard so that's something different um, you'll also notice right here we've got a wireless WAN antenna which was an option that you could get on the X61 as well here's our key here's our latch for raising the lid um, and as we come across we see we don't really have anything else here but a couple of notches here where the dock would fit in okay on this side here you'll see we've got uh, wait a minute Did I, I lie we do have something else here in the front got an SD card slot right there forgot all about that anyway back over here we got a PC card slot and then we've got our wireless antenna on off switch right there okay and that's also something different from the X61 the X61 that was right here on the front okay so that's something different as well in the form factor and as we come around you see we've got another USB slot um, here we've got a LAN port VGA um, we've also got venting here AC power Kensington lock here come across the back we've just got our battery um, on this side you'll see we've got another USB port again here's where the pin is and this port right here we've got one screw pop this out this is where you can replace the hard drive uh, we've got a modem jack right here our audio ports right here and here we've got another USB port down here so we've got one two um, three USB ports on this that works out pretty well let's take a look at the bottom side here again here's that one screw so that you can pop out the hard drive and change that very easy to get to to configure the RAM this has got two gigabytes of RAM in it at the moment okay there you have that now here's the one switch as opposed to two uh, the X61 had two one on the other side this has got one in the middle to pop out the battery uh, let's go ahead and pop that battery out here so you take a look at it there you go and again it's a little wider than the one on the X61 simply because the body is wider here um, I do believe this is a six cell battery that this is running um, and we'll just put that we'll pop that back in there if we can there we go and go ahead and lock that down okay let's go ahead and open her up take a look at what's on the inside there are some things that are different now this is going to get some reflection on the screen here I apologize for that now, this is not a view anywhere screen like I had on the X61 um, so interestingly enough you know, I kind of like that fact um, simply because it doesn't smudge as much <laughs> you'll notice up here we have a webcam right here at the top okay uh, that seems to work pretty well as far as these uh, embedded webcams do on these particular devices uh, we've got our power switch here an array of indicator lights right across there okay um, here we've got a button I'm not quite sure what this button does here it's got a circle on it there um, but this one here is our rotate button um, here we've got our toolbox button and here we've got a button to lock the screen right here I'll have to check on that and get back to you on that We've got our volume buttons right here, the ThinkVantage blue button, which brings up the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad ThinkVantage menu of options, power button here. So, again, whether you're in 
laptop mode or tablet mode, you've got power buttons. Um, you can control things pretty well here as far as that's concerned. Um, and of course you've got that great ThinkPad keyboard and I'm a very big fan of that. We've got the thumbstick here and of course our mouse buttons right here with the middle button there that allows us to uh, you know, scroll and do things like that just like on the X61. So like that quite a bit uh, as far as that's concerned. Now notice something here when we go ahead and rotate the screen around that's missing. Here we have our fingerprint reader. Not sure I showed you that. It used to have right here a nav dial like on the X61 is what, where that was. I'll go ahead and show you that. Right here. We have no nav dial here on the X200T. Uh, I'm sure some folks are going to miss that. Um, me, not necessarily. I very seldom use that when I had this in tablet mode using it like this. Again, this feels very good in my hands whether I'm holding it this way or this way. I don't know about you, but I always prefer to hold it this way with the battery here holding that. That's secondary portrait mode, I believe, in terms of what's going on there. But it feels very balanced, very, very nice in my hand. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera around here um, so that you can look at the screen while I work with it a little bit. So I'm going to stop this, turn the camera around, let you take a look at it here, try to get the lighting so we don't get any glare when any of this happens. And the reason I'm going to do that, this is running um, the new Centrino Core 2 Duo platform. Um, it's an L9600 uh, chip rated at 1. Uh, 1.86 gigahertz. Um, same thing I'm seeing on the HP 2730P tablet PC that I'm testing out. And let me tell you something folks, I am very impressed with this platform. Um, things fly on this. Now watch what's going to happen here. I'm running Vista Business. Uh, it's probably going to prove a liar out of me. Hola, en esta ocasión tenemos el completo análisis del LG Optimus L3X. Este dispositivo es el más básico de la serie Optimus L2. Posee una pantalla QVGA de 3.2 pulgadas, un procesador de 1 GHz, 512 MB de memoria RAM, 4 GB de almacenamiento interno, una cámara de 3 MP y Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean como el aspecto más importante de este dispositivo. El LG L3X es la versión vitaminada del original L3. La letra X añade valor al dispositivo al incluir mejoras que todos los usuarios le exigían a LG. Es por esto que el fabricante no dudó en renovar la línea que le generó bastantes unidades vendidas el año pasado hasta el día de hoy. El LG L3X es un smartphone de pequeñas dimensiones. De largo mide 10.2 cm por 6.1 cm de ancho por 1.19 cm de grosor. La botonera de volumen se encuentra en la parte izquierda del dispositivo. El botón de encendido y el jack de auriculares están en la parte superior. En cuanto a diseño, sigue la línea de su antecesor, con ángulos bien definidos y reduciendo un poco el grosor, así como el peso en general. Más allá del diseño, este LG se siente con mejor calidad de construcción, sintiéndose más sólido en la mano. LG optó por plástico y no conforme con esto es de tipo brillante, lo que da sensación que se raye y se ensucie con facilidad. La pantalla es un panel de 3.2 pulgadas, Resolución 240x320. Personalmente considero que hay dispositivos de entrada que optan por pantallas de 3.5 pulgadas y con resolución 320x480. Este display proporcionado por LG tiene buenos niveles de brillo, gracias a la tecnología IPS que incluye, ofreciendo mejores ángulos de visión. La resolución y el tamaño de pantalla, la verdad es que se quedan justos para la navegación web, así como para el consumo multimedia, sin olvidar que es multitáctil y de tipo capacitivo que responde bastante bien. La pantalla no añade ninguna capa de protección especial, por lo que obliga al usuario a usar micas para aumentar la vida de la pantalla. En cuanto a multimedia, la cámara es de 3 megapíxeles, sin flash LED. Su precio ha obligado a LG a optar por este sensor. Las fotografías van a la par de, con las cámaras de su competencia, como es el 
ZEV791, el Alcatelo T4010, el Nokia Lumia 505, como el Huawei Y210. La verdad es que he notado que tiene mejor balance de blancos que el Nokia Lumia y bastantes agregados. La cámara tiene opción de geotagging y la posibilidad de compartir directamente nuestras fotografías y videos directamente a nuestras redes sociales. La calidad con la que graba video es bastante estándar. Graba 640p a 30 cuadros por segundo, que sin duda nos sacará de algún apuro en situaciones no tan formales. El dispositivo tiene ranura micro SD para expandirla hasta 32 GB. Lo más importante en cuanto a sus entrañas, nos encontramos con un procesador Qualcomm Snapdragon de 1 GHz, 512 MB de memoria RAM, 4 GB de almacenamiento interno. El sistema operativo elegido por LG ha sido Jelly Bean en su versión 4.1.2, añadiendo Google Now y varias mejoras del sistema operativo. La interfaz Optimus es la capa de personalización que produce LG. Sinceramente a estas alturas necesita un lavado de cara, sin embargo deja una buena sensación ya que puede ordenar nuestras aplicaciones de manera más acertada a nuestras necesidades, además de incluir widgets interesantes. Este dispositivo sin duda no es el más rápido que existe. Algunas veces presentarán algún tipo de lag en las aplicaciones que requieran muchas especificaciones, como lo son los juegos en 3D, y o aplicaciones que sean bastante pesadas. En cuanto a la navegación web, el Pinch Zoom reacciona de manera muy cómoda gracias a su procesador y a la memoria RAM que incluye. En cuanto al sonido, las bocinas se escuchan bastante bien, y al incorporar auriculares los bajos están bien controlados. Este dispositivo tiene una batería de 1540 mAh, lo que se traduce a 5 horas de uso continuo trabajando en redes 2G o alrededor de unas 4 horas en redes 3G. ¿Este dispositivo para quiénes? Es para usuarios que van a tener su primer Android y para aquellas personas que no quieran gastar tanto en tener la última versión del sistema operativo de Android. No cabe duda que la serie L2 de LG le ayudará bastante a popularizarse ya que son atractivos smartphones a precios reducidos, ya que funcionan de manera muy acertada. Lo que no me gustó del dispositivo es que la pantalla pudo ser más grande, quizá de 3.5 pulgadas, ya que 3.2 pulgadas no se puede tener una experiencia web adecuada. La memoria RAM es bastante ajustada, por lo que algunas veces ocasionará alguno que otro lag, pero eso no impedirá el uso del smartphone en la vida cotidiana. Hasta pronto. Hola, en esta ocasión tenemos el completo análisis del LG Optimus L3X. Este dispositivo es el más básico de la serie Optimus L2. Posee una pantalla QVGA de 3.2 pulgadas, un procesador de 1 GHz, 512 MB de memoria RAM, 4 GB de almacenamiento interno, una cámara de 3 MP y Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean como el aspecto más importante de este dispositivo. El LG L3X es la versión vitaminada del original L3. La letra X añade valor al dispositivo al incluir mejoras que todos los usuarios le exigían a LG. Es por esto que el fabricante no dudó en renovar la línea que le generó bastantes unidades vendidas el año pasado hasta el día de hoy. El LG L3X es un smartphone de pequeñas dimensiones. De largo mide 10.2 cm por 6.1 cm de ancho por 1.19 cm de grosor. La botonera de volumen se encuentra en la parte izquierda del dispositivo. El botón de encendido y el jack de auriculares están en la parte superior. En cuanto a diseño, sigue la línea de su antecesor, con ángulos bien definidos y reduciendo un poco el grosor, así como el peso en general. Más allá del diseño, este LG se siente con mejor calidad de construcción, sintiéndose más sólido en la mano. LG optó por plástico y no conforme con esto es de tipo brillante, lo que da sensación que se raye y se ensucie con facilidad. La pantalla es un panel de 3.2 pulgadas, Resolución 240x320. Personalmente considero que hay dispositivos de entrada que optan por pantallas de 3.5 pulgadas y con resolución 320x480. Este display proporcionado por LG tiene buenos niveles de brillo, gracias a la tecnología IPS que incluye, ofreciendo mejores ángulos de visión. 
La resolución y el tamaño de pantalla, la verdad es que se quedan justos para la navegación web, así como para el consumo multimedia, sin olvidar que es multitáctil y de tipo capacitivo que responde bastante bien. La pantalla no añade ninguna capa de protección especial, por lo que obliga al usuario a usar micas para aumentar la vida de la pantalla. En cuanto a multimedia, la cámara es de 3 megapíxeles, sin flash LED. Su precio ha obligado a LG a optar por este sensor. Las fotografías van a la par de, con las cámaras de su competencia, como es el ZEV791, el Alcatel OT4010, el Nokia Lumia 505, como el Huawei Y210. La verdad es que he notado que tiene mejor balance de blancos que el Nokia Lumia y bastantes agregados. La cámara tiene opción de geotagging y la posibilidad de compartir directamente nuestras fotografías y videos directamente a nuestras redes sociales. La calidad con la que graba video es bastante estándar. Graba 640p a 30 cuadros por segundo, que sin duda nos sacará de algún apuro en situaciones no tan formales. El dispositivo tiene ranura micro SD para expandirla hasta 32 GB. Lo más importante en cuanto a sus entrañas, nos encontramos con un procesador Qualcomm Snapdragon de 1 GHz, 512 MB de memoria RAM, 4 GB de almacenamiento interno. El sistema operativo elegido por LG ha sido Jelly Bean en su versión 4.1.2, añadiendo Google Now y varias mejoras del sistema operativo. La interfaz Optimus es la capa de personalización que produce LG. Sinceramente a estas alturas necesita un lavado de cara, sin embargo deja una buena sensación ya que puede ordenar nuestras aplicaciones de manera más acertada a nuestras necesidades, además de incluir widgets interesantes. Este dispositivo sin duda no es el más rápido que existe. Algunas veces presentarán algún tipo de lag en las aplicaciones que requieran muchas especificaciones, como lo son los juegos en 3D, y o aplicaciones que sean bastante pesadas. En cuanto a la navegación web, el Pinch Zoom reacciona de manera muy cómoda gracias a su procesador y a la memoria RAM que incluye. En cuanto al sonido, las bocinas se escuchan bastante bien, y al incorporar auriculares los bajos están bien controlados. Este dispositivo tiene una batería de 1540 mAh, lo que se traduce a 5 horas de uso continuo trabajando en redes 2G o alrededor de unas 4 horas en redes 3G. ¿Este dispositivo para quiénes? Es para usuarios que van a tener su primer Android y para aquellas personas que no quieran gastar tanto en tener la última versión del sistema operativo de Android. No cabe duda que la serie L2 de LG le ayudará bastante a popularizarse ya que son atractivos smartphones a precios reducidos, ya que funcionan de manera muy acertada. Lo que no me gustó del dispositivo es que la pantalla pudo ser más grande, quizá de 3.5 pulgadas, ya que 3.2 pulgadas no se puede tener una experiencia web adecuada. La memoria RAM es bastante ajustada, por lo que algunas veces ocasionará alguno que otro lag, pero eso no impedirá el uso del smartphone en la vida cotidiana. Hasta pronto. Well, who are you? I'm Jamin Guy. I'm the director of product development for Streamweaver. Yeah, and who are you? My name is Eric Carlson. I'm the CEO of Streamweaver. Yeah, and we have an assistant. I'm with the PR team. Yeah, and who are you? <laughs> Stephanie Cooley. Very cool. And what, what are we seeing? Yeah, so we're talking about Streamweaver. It is a, um, a multi-angle mobile video app that makes it really easy and fun to connect and record with your friends. Okay. And then we play back video to you in split screen synchronicity. So it means that all of the videos that you record across your friends are shown at the same time on the okay. same screen. And what's this for? Is it like for going to a, a concert or a wedding or a birthday party or something and shooting multi party uh, video? What, 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 do you, what are some of the use cases you expect people to use this for? Yeah, so anything that's worth recording video is worth doing on Streamweaver. You can record on your own or with friends. And we think that there are lots of different use cases that are pretty fun. Birthday parties are, are great where you show multiple angles, a skateboard trick, um, a football game, a baseball game, a concert. There are lots of different things that, uh, that, that are really uniquely told from multiple angles. Yeah. We like to think a lot about um, the other sides of the story, you know? So when you capture your video perspective of something, you miss someone else's perspective. And so we connect all those. Can I show you one? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
And uh, so you shoot them on the iPhone, and uh, it, it has an app that looks like Instagram for video, right? And uh, uploads them automatically. Yeah, and what this is is just to give you a sense of what a split screen video can look like. This is, um, you'll see it. It's uh, a fireworks display. Some guys down in Oakland were shooting some fireworks. And see one angle here, one perspective, and then the output over here, the other perspective that you, we just do automatically with our app. Right. So there's no editing, no work, no effort by the users. They just create the videos, they shoot the videos, and we do the rest. And that's two perspectives. We can actually do more. So I'll show you one more, it's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. It was shot. Um, this is actually, you mentioned the uh, birthday party. We always thought like a surprise party would be a lot of fun. And so this one is pretty cool. So they used four, four iPhones, all with our app. And a bunch of our friends are hanging out in a, in a room. Okay. Here she comes. That's pretty cool. And they're time synced, right? So you won't see any latency between them. And this is with our app. And all, all they had to do was, was, you know, their friends and they just record together and uploaded the videos and we do the rest. How do you time sync them? And, and how do you know the video is from the same time? You know, because if I shoot a video right now and then in five more minutes I shoot another one, mm -hmm. how do you know which one's uh, uh, synced up? Yeah, so we're able to see a timestamp on a video and okay. we can look at that. And uh, uh, there's a competitor called Viclone. Explain how you differ from them. Yeah, so we're also innovating with multi-angle video. There's a lot of room to innovate there. And what, um, what we've done is we've given users control over, over who they record with. Yep. We thought it was really important from the start to, um, to connect people with friends. We thought that people like to record with each other instead of you know, random people. Uh, so we do that. The other thing that we do is we make it possible to record with the people who wherever they are. They can be in the same room. They can be in the same like, arena. They can be in the same city, the same state. They could be all the way across the country, the planet. Geography doesn't matter for us. So we're just bound by time. Um, and the last part is the output. The video that you actually get from us shows all angles. We, uh, we don't edit it down. You see every second that everyone recorded all at the same time synchronized in the split screen layout that I just showed you. Now that's pretty sharp video. Is that up on YouTube or how do you get friends to watch it? Yeah, so within the app, you can see the videos that you've made, and we give you the control over who to share with. So if you become friends with other folks, uh, with your, if you connect with your friends through Streamweaver, then they'll see the videos you've made in the app itself, but then you can share how you want. So you can post to Facebook, you can post to Twitter, uh, Google+, Plus. you can post where you want, you can send an email or an SMS and share a link to the video where they can come back to either the app or the website and watch the video that you made. And how are you guys going to make money with this? Yeah, so uh, initially, as we launch, we're all about users. And so um, generating a strong user base, getting feedback, learning what people are going to do with multi-perspective video, because it's really, really new. Yeah. Uh, we have our eye on multiple revenue models that are all really viable and interesting for us, but we're not in a rush to implement them. Yeah. Uh I'm sure I'm going to get help from people who are on Android or Windows Phone and say, what about us? You know, because this is on iPhone, right? Yeah, this is iPhone, so we, yeah. we want to focus there, right? There's a lot of great innovation on iPhones. Uh, you know, we've got Android in our site, but we want to wait until the, the jelly stops wiggling with, with what we built here before we look at uh, expanding into other platforms. And we know, you know, with this as a group experience, um, you can have a recording experience in Streamweaver where you record by yourself, but it's a lot more fun with friends. And we know that friends don't all have iPhones, so we have to get to the point of, of sharing it on Android and, and others. Does the app work on iPad as well? Because I see it when I went to Disney World or Disneyland, uh, I saw a lot of people shooting on iPad. It looks really dorky, really? but people are yeah. doing it. And even at the Olympics, the athletes were holding iPads as they were walking down onto the field, right? So yeah. um, are, you, are you able to shoot on the iPad and share the videos as well? Uh, I mean, we, we don't have an iPad yeah, yeah. app yet. But. Yeah, we don't have a, an iPad native app yet, but okay. you can run it in double mode and, and it'll still work, but it's iPhone only right now as okay. far as the 
layout goes. Very cool. Are you grabbing any other data off of any other sensors other than time and the pixels off the video sensor? If you allow it, we uh, grab location. Okay. Yeah, and that way, you know, when you when you upload your video, um, you can add location. So we, we tie into Foursquare. Yeah. Uh, and so if you're here in um, Half Moon Bay, and we got a buddy off in you know Nashville and someone else in New York. We can grab all those different locations and show them. How many people can be shooting at one time? Right now we do four. Okay. And we. How do I know which four, the other four? Because if if uh, you know fifty people go to Las Vegas for yeah. a bachelor party or something, we have a lot of people shooting. How do I pick the four that are going to be with my video? We show you. Yeah. Sure. Let's show. Them. Yep. Okay. So here's the app, and so I'm going to shoot a video with. Eric and Stephanie. So here, this is a list of all the people that I'm friends with, and I can choose any of them or none of them if I just want to record by myself. Yep. So I'll choose Eric and Stephanie. And then, now they will get uh, invites, they'll get notifications that, that ask them to join. You'll see right now, it might be hard to see, but they're uh, translucent. Yep. Whenever they actually join this session, they'll become fully opaque. Okay. And then whenever I start recording or they start recording, there will be a little orange red box around their avatars that show that they've started. So, so I just joined. So Eric just joined, so he popped in. Um, and now yep. Stephanie just joined. I just joined. So I'll start recording now, and then um, very shortly they'll be able to see that I started recording. When they start, um, then I'll see. You know, so now it looks like all three of us are recording. So. Okay. Great. And we have a lot of videos so, just like this, so we're standing in a room kind of recording. Yeah, so. these are more fun than most of my videos, which are source code. Got so, it. all right. So, I will stop recording there. I can enter a caption if I want. I'll just say um, at schools. All right. Great. So now I'm uploading. Um, we hide that process, but if you want, you can see that it's it's going up there. Yeah, that's great. It was, we push upload to the background too, so you can do other things. You don't have to wait until the upload finishes. Yeah, you can go watch other videos or go make another video with some uh, some more friends. Okay. All right. So now that I'm now that I'm done here, we're uh, waiting for the video to weave. Um, so I can show you some other parts of the app. Um, I'm on the featured list right now. If I go to home, oops. This will be a blend of all of my stuff and then all of my friends' stuff as well. So if I want to see stuff they've created, I can do that. Um, I can add friends. Um, there's some settings here. So if you if you don't want to upload over 3G, you can choose to upload over Wi-Fi only. Yep. Um, so you can save it for later. And you have the option whether the, your video saves to the camera roll or not. So if I go to Featured um, while we're waiting, I'll show you another video that's really cool. I like this one a lot. It'll give you an idea of... You can show air hockey? Yeah, this is the air hockey one. And this shows how good our time sync is right now. So we're working on making it better. Um, but this is pretty sweet. All right. Very cool. Now, what we just did is we did a video with just three of us here in the room. Yep. Um, we can do another one. Uh, we got a guy, a friend of ours out in Nashville. He can join us on a video too, because just to show you that, you know, it doesn't matter where, where people are. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I believe you. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how long how long does it take to upload and then see the video? So our our video is back already. Okay. And right now it just takes about it depends um, on latency, but by the time everybody's video is uploaded, it happens pretty quickly. Okay. So I'll start recording now, and then um, very shortly they'll be able to see that I started recording. When they start, um, then I'll see. You know, so now it looks like all three of us are recording. So. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, these are more fun than most of my videos, which are source code. Now you're limited. Yeah, yeah. You're limited to one minute, right? That's correct. Can I pay for more? Um. <laughs> hey, we can send a free model. You know, I mean, hey, if, you, if you want to send us money, that that's awesome. Because you can right? see where I want to go with this. Sure. Right? I want to use iPhones with two or three cameras and do longer video, maybe a half an hour, sure. right? and. Yeah, it would take forever to upload, yeah. but uh, you know, I'm I'm on good Wi-Fi here. It doesn't right. take forever. Yeah. It Technically, takes... like you could do that today, but now, right now, we're really focused on user experience. Yeah, and we're gonna have a lot of different users who aren't gonna be on Wi-Fi. Yeah, and so as networks get faster and faster, and new devices come out that record higher and higher quality video, we'll just keep going up and moving along with the trends. 
Yeah, there's a technology. So there's a iPhone, new iPhone with 4G coming out, and lots yeah, of Android yeah. phones have 4G, right? So yeah, yeah, it goes exactly. faster, but uh, maybe you can make make it 10 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, these videos you said are hosted on your service, so viewers have to come back to your service to see them. They're not on right. YouTube or on Facebook, right? Right. You can post to Facebook. You'll you can post right. Exactly. Post a link. Right. But it goes back to our site. And there's a detailed video page. Um, this responsive, so it should work across all devices. So there's no way to transcode and put it on YouTube at all, or uh, not yet. Okay. Cool. But we know we have to get there because yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a huge audience of people that we think are going to have a lot of fun with multi-perspective video up on YouTube. So we want to yeah. enable that, and so uh, that's coming soon. The yeah. tricky part with launching our first, we've only been at it for about seven months. Uh, we started developing back in January. And this is our first release. And the hardest part is figuring out like what not to do yep. when you come right out of the gate. We know all kinds of things we want to go do, but we want to find out from our users what they really like. Yeah. And uh, how are you guys funded? Tell me a little bit about the company. Yeah, and how many so people we, are doing we have a Series Seed uh, funding right now. We're about to close the Series A. Um, our investors are a mix of venture capital firms in Nashville, uh, as well as a couple of private investors that... Uh, uh, we're signing on really soon. Okay. Uh, Music guys in Nashville? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, uh, so, yeah, who would have thought, right? We're coming out of Nashville. We just flew in yesterday. Yeah. But uh, it's a great town. Mm -hmm. And it's what I, I'm pretty new there. And what I've been learning is that there's an incredible creative energy and just like this technical talent and this engaged investor pool. Yep. Uh, and we've been able to build and fund our company right in Nashville. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we're hiring. So if anybody uh, <laughs> wants to move to Nashville, um, and Probably hiring Android developers, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, Notice exactly. some Java. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do we learn more about it? Where do we get it? Um, you can go to streamweaver.com, okay. um, and it'll be on the App Store very soon. Very cool. So, Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thanks Thank for you. coming on and showing to me. Yeah, really we appreciate cool. it. Oh, who are you? I'm Jamin Guy. I'm the Director of Product Development for Streamweaver. Yeah. And who are you? My name is Eric Carlson. I'm the CEO of Streamweaver. Yeah. And we have an assistant. I'm with the PR team. Yeah. And who are you? <laughs> Stephanie Cooley. Very cool. And what, what are we seeing? Yeah. So we're talking about Streamweaver. It is a, um, a multi-angle mobile video app that makes it really easy and fun to connect and record with your friends. Okay. And then we play back video to you in split screen synchronicity. So it means that all of the videos that you record across your friends are shown at the same time on the okay. same screen. And what's this for? Is it like for going to a, a concert or a wedding or a birthday party or something and shooting multi party uh, video what 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 do you what are some of the use cases you expect people to use this for yeah so anything that's worth recording video is worth doing on streamweaver you can record on your own or with friends and we think that there are lots of different use cases that are pretty fun birthday parties are are great where you show multiple angles a skateboard trick um, a football game a baseball game a concert there are lots of different things that uh, that, that are really uniquely told from multiple angles. Yeah. We like to think a lot about um, the other sides of the story, you know? So when you capture your video perspective of something, you miss someone else's perspective. And so we connect all those. Can I show you one? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, so you shoot them on the iPhone, and uh, it, it has an app that looks like Instagram for video, right? And uh, uploads them automatically. Yeah, and what this is is just to give you a sense of what a split screen video can look like. This is. Um, You'll see it. It's uh, a fireworks display. Some guys down in Oakland were shooting some fireworks. And see one angle here, one perspective, and then the output over here, the other perspective that you, we just do automatically with our app. Right. So there's no editing, no work, no effort by the users. They just create the videos, they shoot the videos, and we do the rest. And that's two perspectives. We can actually do more. So I'll show you one more, it's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. It was shot. Um, this is actually, you mentioned the uh, birthday party. We always thought like a surprise party would be a lot of fun. And so this one is pretty cool. So they used four, four iPhones, all with our app. 
and a bunch of our friends were hanging out in a in a room. Okay. Here she comes. That's pretty cool. And they're time synced, right? So you won't see any latency between them. And this is with our app. And all, all they had to do was, was, you know, they're friends and they just record together and uploaded the videos and we do the rest. How do you time sync them? And, and how do you know the video is from the same time? You know, because if I shoot a video right now and then in five more minutes I shoot another one, mm -hmm. how do you know which one's uh, uh, synced up? Yeah, so we're able to see a timestamp on a video and okay. we can look at that. And uh, uh, there's a competitor called Viclone. Explain how you differ from them. Yeah, so we're also innovating with multi-angle video. There's a lot of room to innovate there. And what um, what we've done is we've given users control over over who they record with. Yeah. We thought it was really important from the start to um, to connect people with friends. We thought that people like to record with each other instead of you know random people. Uh, so we do that. The other thing that we do is we make it possible to record with the people who wherever they are. They can be in the same room. They can be in the same like arena. They can be in the same city, the same state. They can be all the way across the country, the planet. Geography doesn't matter for us. We're just bound by time. Um, and the last part is the output. The video that you actually get from us shows all angles. We, uh, we don't edit it down. You see every second that everyone recorded all at the same time synchronized in the split screen layout that I just showed you. Now that's pretty sharp video. Is that up on YouTube or how do you get friends to watch it? Yeah, so within the app you can see the videos that you've made and we give you the control over who to share with. So if you become friends with other folks uh, with your, if you connect with your friends through Streamweaver, then they'll see the videos you've made in the app itself. But then you can share how you want. So you can post to Facebook, you can post to Twitter, uh, Google Plus. You can post where you want. You can send an email or an SMS and share a link to the video where they can come back to either the app or the website and watch the video that you made. And how are you guys going to make money with this? Yeah. So uh, initially, as we launch, we're all about users, and so. Um, generating a strong user base, getting feedback, learning what people are going to do with multi-perspective video because it's really, really new. Yeah. Uh, we have our eye on multiple revenue models that are all really viable and interesting for us, but we're not in a rush to implement them. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get help from people who are on Android or Windows Phone and say, "What about us?" You know, because this is on iPhone, right? Yeah, this is iPhone, so we, yeah. we want to focus there, right? There's a lot of great innovation on iPhones. Uh, you know, we've got Android in our site, but we want to wait until the the jelly stops wiggling. With, with what we built here before we look at uh, expanding into other platforms. And we know, you know with this as a group experience, um, you can have a recording experience in Streamweaver where you record by yourself, but it's a lot more fun with friends. And we know that friends don't all have iPhones, so we have to get to the point of, of sharing on an Android and, and others. Does the app work on iPad as well? Because I see it when I went to Disney World or Disneyland, uh, I saw a lot of people shooting on iPad. It looks really dorky, really? but people are yeah. doing it. And even at the Olympics, the athletes were holding iPads as they were walking down onto the field, right? So yeah. um, are, you, are you able to shoot on the iPad and share the videos as well? Uh, I mean, we, we don't have an iPad yeah, app yet. But. Yeah, we don't have a, an iPad native app yet, but okay. you can run it in double mode and, and it'll still work, but it's iPhone only right now as far okay. as the layout goes. Very cool. Are you grabbing any other data off of any other sensors other than time and the pixels off the video sensor? If you allow it, we uh, grab location. Okay. Yeah, and that way, you know, when you, when you upload your video, um, you can add location. So we, we tie into Foursquare. Yep. Uh, and so if you're here in um, Half Moon Bay, and we got a buddy off in you know Nashville and someone else in New York. We can grab all the, the different locations and show them. How many people can be shooting at one time? Right now we do four. Okay. And we. How do I know which four, the other four? Because if if uh, you know fifty people go to Las Vegas for yeah. a bachelor party or something, we have a lot of people shooting. How do I pick the four that are going to be with my video? We show you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, let's show. Them. Yep. Okay. So here's the app, and so I'm going to shoot a video with. Eric and Stephanie. So here, this is a list of all the people that I'm friends with, and I can choose any of them or none of them if I just want to record by myself. Yep. So I'll choose Eric and Stephanie. And then 
Now they will get uh, invites, they'll get notifications that, that ask them to join. You'll see right now, it might be hard to see, but they're uh, translucent. Yep. Whenever they actually join this session, they'll become fully opaque. Okay. And then whenever I start recording or they start recording, there'll be a little orange red box around their avatars that show that they've started. So, so I just joined. So Eric just joined, so he popped in. Um, and now yep. Stephanie just joined. I just joined. So I'll start recording now, and then um, very shortly they'll be able to see that I started recording. When they start, um, then I'll see. You know, so now it looks like all three of us are recording. So. Okay. Great. And we have a lot of videos so, just like this, so we're standing in a room kind of recording. Yeah, and these are more fun than most of my videos, which are source code. Got it. So, all right. So I will stop recording there. I can enter a caption if I want. I'll just say, um, at schools. All right. So now I'm uploading. Um, we hide that process, but if you want, you can see that it's it's going up there. Yeah, that's great. It was, we push upload to the background too, so you can do other things. You don't have to wait until the upload finishes. Yeah. You can go watch other videos or go make another video with some more, some more friends. Okay. All right. So now that I'm now that I'm done here, we're uh, waiting for the video to weave. Um, so I can show you some other parts of the app. Um, I'm on the featured list right now. If I go to home. Oops. This will be a blend of all of my stuff and then all of my friends' stuff as well. So if I want to see stuff they've created, I can do that. Um, I can add friends. Um, there's some settings here. So if you if you don't want to upload over 3G, you can choose to upload over Wi-Fi only. Yep. Um, so you can save it for later. And you have the option whether the, your video saves to the camera roll or not. So if I go to Featured, um, while we're waiting, I'll show you another video that's really cool. I like this one a lot. It'll give you an idea of... You can show air hockey? Yeah, this is the air hockey one. And this shows how good our time sync is right now. So we're working on making it better. Um, but this is pretty sweet. All right. Very cool. You're getting scared. You're getting so scared. Now, what we just did is we did a video with just three of us here in the room. Yep. Um, we can do another one. Uh, we got a guy, a friend of ours out in Nashville. He can join us on a video too, because just to show you that, you know, it doesn't matter where, where people are. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I believe you. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how long how long does it take to upload and then see the video? So our our video is back already. Okay. And right now it just takes about it depends um, on latency, but by the time everybody's video is uploaded, it happens pretty quickly. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, these are more fun than most of my videos, which are source code. Now you're limited, yeah, you're limited to one minute, right? That's correct. Can I pay for more? Um. <laughs> hey, we can set a free model. You know, I mean, hey, if, you, if you want to send us money, that, that's awesome. Because you can right? see where I want to go with this. Sure. Right? I want to use iPhones with two or three cameras and do longer video, maybe a half an hour. Sure. Right? And yeah, it would take forever to upload, yeah. but uh, you know, I'm I'm on good Wi-Fi here. It doesn't right. take forever. Uh, technically, takes... like you could do that today, but now, right now, we're really focused on user experience. Yeah, and we're gonna have a lot of different users who aren't gonna be on Wi-Fi. Yeah, and so as networks get faster and faster, and new devices come out that record higher and higher quality video, we'll just keep going up and moving along with the trends. Yeah, there's a technology, so. there's a iPhone, new iPhone with 4G coming out, and lots yeah, of Android yeah. phones have 4G, right? So yeah, yeah, it goes exactly. faster, but uh, maybe you can make make it 10 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, these videos you said are hosted on your service, so viewers have to come back to your service to see them. They're not on YouTube or on Facebook, right? Right. You can post to Facebook. You, post you can the paste, link. right? Exactly. Post a link, right. but it goes back to our site. And there's a detailed video page. Um, it's responsive, so it should work across all devices. So there's no way to transfer code and put it on YouTube at all or uh, not yet okay cool. but we know we have to get there because yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's a huge audience of people that we think are gonna have a lot of fun with multi-perspective video up on YouTube so we want right. to enable that and so uh, that's coming soon the yeah. tricky part with launching our first we've only been at it for about seven months uh, we started developing back in January and this is our first release and the hardest part is figuring out like what not to do yeah when you come right out of the gate we know all kinds of things we want to go do but we want to find out from our users what they really like. Yeah. And uh, how are you guys funded? Tell me a little bit about the company. Yeah. And how many so people we, work there, so. we have a Series Seed uh, funding right now. We're about to close the Series A. Um, our investors are a mix of venture capital firms in Nashville, uh, as well as a couple of private investors that uh, 
uh, we're signing on really soon. Okay. Uh, Music guys in Nashville? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah, who would have thunk, right? We're coming out of Nashville. We just flew in yesterday. Yeah. But uh, it's a great town. And it's, what I, I'm pretty new there. And what I've been learning is that there's an incredible creative energy and just a, this technical talent and this engaged investor pool. Yep. Uh, and we've been able to build and fund our company right in Nashville. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we're hiring. So if anybody uh, yeah. wants to be in Nashville, um, and Probably hiring Android developers, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly. some Java. Yeah. Um, where do we learn more about it? Where do we get it? Um, you can go to streamweaver.com, okay. um, and it'll be on the App Store very soon. Very cool. So, Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thanks Thank for you. coming on and showing to me. Yeah, so we appreciate it.